These rediscovered Hitler diaries are causing no end of trouble, but they are worth every Deutschmark. When Stern had the handwriting checked, they all agreed that the diaries were genuine. Of course they were, when compared to Hitler's letter, which Gerd had acquired from my shop. <laughs> Naturally, the price doubled, and my brother, I was able to tell them, had suddenly discovered many more. Everyone was happy, except the historian David Irving. Trust the English to be sceptical. Your own personal copy, from me. I'm glad someone thought to give me a copy before I actually publish it. Thank you. Gerd wanted a quiet celebration with you. Henry. There. You know, I know we've been a bit up and down these past few years, but I owe you everything. Now it's fine again. We're making history together. And with the Irving problem contained, Sorg and Hensman off to New York, I want you to be really joyful. Things are going so well for all of us. Certainly things are going well for you. It's been a combination of luck and skill. And very, very hard work. Superb. Well, this is only the tip of the collection. Most of it is in the apartment downstairs. That's true. We're feeling rather cramped up here. I've been looking at a larger house on the Elbe. More for the collection than for us, of course. Well, certainly doesn't seem like the same guy who was always asking me for company loans. But he isn't the same guy. He's the man who discovered the Hitler diaries. Yes, of course. The Grunner and Yar have been extremely generous with my contract. And I haven't had to pay for the larger pieces. Who? Oh? Oh, they came from my contact in Stuttgart. He thinks I'm a collector, not a journalist. So Schulte Hillen established a special reserve fund for me to buy manuscripts and art. Reserve fund? One and a half million marks. I'm telling you, he's shitting on us from a great height. You mean you think he's forged the diaries? I'm sure the forensic test will confirm us a great find, but I'm telling you, Gerd Heidemann is skimming a personal fortune off the top. Look. Gerd Heidemann is a brilliant and committed journalist. And a very brave man as well. There was a period of time when he had to drive into East Germany while a general actually threw the diaries from his car into Heidemann's. Phew. Now, frankly, I am sick and tired of you and Peter Kosh putting him down when you should be... I, I, you, you, you should be licking his boots in gratitude. You know, Henry, the only kind of man who could accuse Gerd Heidemann of using this discovery to line his own pockets is a man who could contemplate such a crime himself.
Hello, Ava. Ava Martha. And that's Henrietta Hoffman von Schirach. Her father was the boss's favorite photographer. She's suing the US government to get her Hitler painting back from the National Army Museum. Billy Price is paying the legal fees. I can't wait to meet this man. Come, we find him. What a gathering. Shall I have a great day at Batchesgard, the villa of Berghoff? Oh, may I introduce the keepers of the flame, Herr and Frau Heidemann? There's Billy Price with Gerda Christian and Christa Schroeder, Hitler's dedicated secretaries. Christa, are you all right? No, I don't feel well. No, her kidneys are kaput, poor dear. But this wonderful man is going to pay for an operation. Well, now, if I can afford nearly $100,000 on printing my book, I guess I can spare a few bucks for Christa's kidneys. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, darling. Um, uh, uh, Billy Price, Gerd and Gina Heidemann. I have been looking forward to meeting you. <laughs> My wife, Gina. Hello, Hello. Honey. You know, I was real hot to buy Goering's yacht from you, but then it was taken off the market. Yes, well, I was trying to sell, but then I had a spot of luck. Oh, I'd love to see it someday. I hear the bedroom alone is worth the price of admission. But we don't charge admission. Just a figure of speech, darling. <laughs> well, if you ever are in Hamburg, you must come and see the yacht and our private Hitler collection. More Hitler art, huh? Christ, wasn't the guy amazing? He produced so much stuff, I'm gonna have to bring out two more catalogs. <laughs> We've been having such an interesting talk, but I, I just have to tear myself away for this war. Oh, honey, these are the Heidemann. They own Goering's yacht, and they have invited us to see it. Oh, you're kidding. Oh, I, I'm so excited I could die. <laughs> we'll see you in Hamburg. Can't wait. Bye-bye. Carl, won't you introduce us? Um, uh, Gerd and Gina Heidemann. Uh, August Priesack. How do you do? How do you do? Come on, let's waltz, darling. I don't want to interrupt your fun, but might I have a small word in your ear? Um. Yes, yes, of course. Uh, Carl, would you dance with Gina? Oh, yes. Thank you for your ear. This is a rather historical matter. I have something in my room with some documents which I would like you to be the first to see. Oh. As a distinguished German journalist, uh, you will come. I promise you won't regret this. Plugged the leak. I had no idea Stable had made photocopies. Well, how much did this lot cost us? Very reasonable. 30,000 bucks. You have a rather extravagant concept of reasonable. Look, if I hadn't coughed up, Presac would have shown this little lot to his bosom friend, David Irving. When you consider what that would have cost us, 30,000 is cheap. Not while the cash keeps flowing in one direction. Out! I see and still have no firm deal on Plan 3. The Americans are much slower than we are. I'm sure Sorgen Hansman will find the Japanese quicker off the mark. Have faith, Gerd. In what, Gerd? In me, Gerd. I'm trying, Gerd. I really am. Doris? Are you enjoying the book? Doris? I mean, it actually put her to sleep. But this woman's no fool. This woman's a sociologist. Oh, I know she is. Well, the plan three's bad, but Doris was born in what? 1942? The Hess Peace Mission, small beer to her as a minor matter. Well, exactly. And most of our readers are her age, and even younger. I said to the first meeting, I knew I was right. It's a disaster kicking off with Hess. We must start with the diaries. Disaster, I agree. I can't get through to Shooter Hillen. 
He's got this Heidemann fixation that drives me nuts. I put it in a memo. Clear, powerful arguments. They must wrench control away from these idiot businessmen. Money covers their eyes like a cataract. They must perform some desperate surgery. for results. Therefore, I beg you to reconsider our publication strategy. Hmm. Hello, Henry. I'd like to see you and Kosh immediately. I thought you were in Tokyo. We were. We should be still. Shorty Helen told us to fly home. He's going to scrap plan three and put the diaries into publication as soon as possible. Well, firstly, you are endangering my source. But obviously, human life means very little to you. Secondly, there are important volumes left to deliver. Oh, Jesus Christ, Gerd. You've been collecting the goddamn things for two years. I mean, how many more diaries can there be? <laughs> Well, we've nothing from 1944. Which would give us a crucial insight into the German response to D-Day, the July bomb yeah, plot. Not to mention the other documents my source promised to deliver. Hitler's book on women? Yeah. Nobody knew it existed. Eighteen! Eighteen! Hundred and pages! His solution to the Jewish problem! And something which interests me, personally, very, very much. The music for his opera, Wieland the Blacksmith. Good. We already have enough material for 18 months of articles. Haven't you made enough money for one lifetime? What in God's name is that supposed to mean? Oh, I think you know. Look, How you dare you eat? Look, I have risked my life down, but we're both on the same side. Uh, speaking as a salesman, I'd be happier to wait until I can offer the entire archives for sale. Surely, Wilfred, you've suffered as a salesman by not being able to tell the truth about Plan 3. Now you can offer all your clients a chance to bid for the diaries. Once they've signed the simple secrets oath, they can inspect the diaries on the week of April the 1st. April the 1st? April the... That's what, that's five weeks? What? That's right. I'll start publication on May the 5th. This is madness. Absolute madness. Gerd, you know I've always backed you, but really this is the only way to protect our investment. There have been too many leaks already. <laughs> we can't risk being pipped at the post. Come on, Thomas, Gerd, let's go to my office. There's lots of work to be done and little time to do it in. Come on. Be taking your orders from Peter Kosh now. Goodbye to the ninth floor, guard. Timetable absolutely clear. May, June, eight weekly installments. Diaries, discovery, Hess's flight, Nazi rise to power. Autumn, ten parts pre war. Following autumn, war years. Now we need the first eight parts in time for the syndication negotiations. That gives us less than a month. Precisely. Since we know that Gerd has a tendency to overwrite and miss his deadlines, I'm giving you and Leah one of our top new reporters to help shoulder the burden. So what's my place in the scheme of things? You'll have some extremely important tasks. We need all the remaining diaries by March 31st, and I want you to lean on the Wiesbaden Police Laboratory. They still haven't carried out the forensic tests on the Hess volume. So 
But these are my tasks. Yes, and very useful tasks they are too. Caution, man, and a rubbing my nose in dog shit. There's been a complete shift in power. <laughs> Hassling the police for authentication. It's a job for a cub reporter. But I thought you were authenticated months ago. Yeah, my handwriting guys. We need proper forensic analysis. Forensic analysis sounds very serious. Oh, it's just a formality. Sending me to these bonds, a form of punishment. This isn't like you getting lost in self-pity. Oh, self-pity. This is not self-pity. This is fact. Now the diaries are going to be published. They don't need me anymore. Man goes my power. Man goes my lifestyle. We'll be scraping along on company loans again. No, my darling. You are missing the clear and wonderful truth. Mm -hmm. Beginning on May the 5th, you are going to have more power and more lifestyle than ever. After all, you are the hero of a story people will be reading about all over the world. It's true. It's so true. <laughs> and a massive promotion. Hmm? Yeah. Press, radio, TV. In fact, our TV division's going to commission a special promotional video. Yeah, they're going to call it The Find. The Find? Starring Gerd Heidemann. <laughs> 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 Beautiful. It's all coming together. It's as if you know who wanted it to happen this way. Mr. Douglas Hume, Mr. MacArthur, if you just sign this little oath of secrecy, I can explain why I'm here. Uh, Dr. Werner, have you completed the test? Uh, yes. Ah, good. Then I'll take the documents. Ah, it's not as simple as that. I'm sorry. Um, the Hess statement came from the same source as the other items? Uh, the Hess statement belongs to Stern. The other items came from my private collection. But you purchased everything from the same man? Yes. And the, uh, <laughs> the handwriting people compared this to those. Yeah, what are you getting at? I'm getting at the uh, pathetic inaccuracy of the handwriting analysis compared to forensics. At least six of these documents are forgeries. I, I don't understand. What, what are you saying? And under ultraviolet light, six of the samples, including the signed photographs, the Hawley telegram, appear to contain a substance called Blancafort. So? Blancafort is a paper whitening agent which didn't come into use until after the Second World War. <laughs> and in addition, the Kleist document appears to contain a glue of a very recent manufacture. And the letter, one of the letters seems to have been written by a typewriter uh, which wasn't built till after 1956. Dr. Werner, you have mentioned the Hess statement. Uh, I'll be honest with you, that is the most important to us. It is, after all, the one we would be publishing that uh, that certainly is genuine, isn't it? I could have 
couldn't possibly swear to that until I carry out more refined tests. I must cut away part of the page, you see, and break it down into its separate components. I see, I see, uh, I see. Well, uh, look, if there is to be damage to the page, I the, think I must take these documents back to well, Stern and consult well, with my colleagues. <laughs> You've been a great help, Dr. Werner, and uh, you'll be hearing from us very soon. Thank you. <laughs> 52 Hitler diaries sitting in a Zurich safe. <laughs> Wait until we tell Rupert. Oh, excuse me, you will tell no one. You signed the oath. Rupert Murdoch, our proprietor. Chap with the money. Oh, <laughs> yes. Uh, I believe we can stretch the secrets agreement to include him. Very wise. Can you predict his reaction? Rupert is fairly unpredictable, but he'll most likely go bananas. Sorry? We think he'll be interested. <laughs> Taxi! Bananas. You know, Wilfred has strong interest in the editors of the Times and the Sunday Times in London. And they're lining up around the world to come to Zurich in April. The material has to be genuine. Of course it's genuine. We've got three handwriting reports to prove it. There's probably been some misunderstanding somewhere along the line. Absolutely. I mean, these documents have done a lot of travelling. They could have been contaminated with whitener at any time. Absolutely. Possibly a, a few dubious papers got mixed up with the genuine material. What does that prove? Oh, Werner made a mistake. <laughs> After all, <laughs> he's only a policeman, for God's sake. I'll arrange for another test, just uh, for safety's sake. This time on the diaries. Sure. Um, I... No need to bother Carl Shaw, Nanan, or the ninth floor about this. No need to at all. You know, they're all crazy over at Wiesbaden with this blanker for crap. So you've had this problem before? Yeah. The first time Werner told me this, I was horrified. And then another police doctor told me that blanker for us existed since 1915. <laughs> Experts are useless jerks. <sighs> I knew there had to be an explanation. <laughs> of course. Good. You weren't worried, were you? No. <laughs> no, of course not. <laughs> so, what have you got for me today? Just great, thanks. Hey, if you don't mind, I'm going to send these photographs to Der Gauleiter. That's a little uh, monthly newsletter they print in Arkansas for right nuts like me. It reaches 5,000 connoisseurs. <laughs> We'd be honored. Yes. Why don't you take a photograph of my latest jewel? Mm -hmm. uh, Gerd, I don't know how to put this, boy. I mean, you have many fine pieces in your apartment. Uh, both apartments. Many fine, fine pieces. And the yacht is breathtaking. It really is. But this Farouk, are you... I mean, are you completely sure it's genuine? Sure. <laughs> of course I'm sure. Would I have it hanging in the cabin too if I wasn't sure? Karen, too, is a shrine, a holy place for me. I would only have this painting hanging in my shrine if I was absolutely sure it was genuine. It was a crazy question, Billy. Farouk is 1,000% genuine. It comes from a source which is 1,000% genuine. Why don't I take a photograph? That thing is such junk. Well, how could he be so naive as to buy it? The guy is one of the true believers, darling. You tell him something's by Hitler and he jumps at it. You know, love is blind. Love? Yeah. I mean, I find Mr. Hitler fascinating, but I don't love him. Presack loves him, and Heidemann loves him more. Gerd Heidemann loves Hitler more than any man I've ever met. 
Isn't that sort of a flaw in a journalist? <laughs> it surely is. In fact, I think you'd have to call it a fatal flaw. those bloody diaries. Yes, sir. I want a lot more than the British rights. Sure, they'll run in the Times or the Sunday Times, but this thing is much bigger than the UK. I'll run them in my New York Post, my Boston Herald, my Australian, one of my New Zealand outlets. Collins can publish the books. I've already got 42% of them. And since I've joined Stigwood, he can make the film, which eventually will turn up on my TV stations. You'll need to have someone authenticate them, of course. Oh, thank you, Charles. <laughs> I would never have thought of that. Sorry. <laughs> Trevor Roper's our man. Distinguished Hitler scholar and an ex-intelligence officer. And he's on the board. Right. Time that arrogant little Don earned his keep. Will he be at Peterhouse? No, it's a Friday. He'll be up at Chiefswood. Jesus Christ, the human waxwork isn't still playing lair to the Scottish borders, is he? He says it helps him to escape from all that Oxbridge infighting. My heart bleeds for him. Well, when you reach the great man, impress on him that this is the vulgar world of commerce and he needs to get his distinguished posterior to Zurich ASAP. Dacre speaking. Oh, hello, Charles. Oh, fine, fine. It's blissful up here. <laughs> Sorry? You found what? Oh, extraordinary. Uh, well, of course, I'd like to see them. Uh, yes. I can fly to Zurich next week, yes. Excellent, excellent. Well, we speak in London. Hmm. Uh, uh, Charles, this isn't one of Murdoch's infantile April Fool jokes, is it? It was with mounting excitement that we approached the clearing in the forest. There, Shrouder. Hello, this is Dr. Verda. From the Wiesbaden Police Station. Yes. Um, I'm still waiting for you to return Mr. Heidemann's documents so we may continue with the forensic test. I'll, I'll be back to you next week. We, we still haven't discussed the implications of your last report. No, don't smile. That was great. The way you were almost actually sweating. Keep it up. It's a damnable breach of faith. It's a highly competitive situation, Hugh. You assured me that all I would be doing today would be getting the feel of the dams. Now you want me to phone you from Zurich with an instant reaction. We understand it can only be an interim opinion, but if that opinion happens to lean towards authentication, then Murdoch will be first in with a bid. Murdoch is a cad. Perhaps. What's good for Murdoch is good for the rest of us, you included. I'm not equipped with Hitler handwriting samples or chronology. Stern will provide that. I'd like at least to consult with Abraham Geekel. Impossible. We're all bound by our secrets pledge. Oh, thanks ever so thanks much. Thanks a lot. It's really nice. Bye. It's very iffy, Charles. Very iffy indeed. It's also extremely exciting. When Murdoch took over, I thought we had Leviathan by the nose. And I'm afraid it's very much the other way around. Ah, morning. May I introduce Mr. Sorga, Lord Dave. My God, Connie, can't you keep still? How can I keep still? I'm being judged. He's not judging you, he's judging the diaries. I am the diaries. I found them. I vouched for them. My name's on the line. 
the three handwriting people have agreed they are genuine. Connie, enough snaps already. Oh, handwriting. That's all on the surface, but this Hugh Trevor Roper, he's a proper person. He'll be judging the content. And he was an intelligence officer during the war. He interrogated people. He's very ferocious, so they say. You sold those diaries to Heidemann in good faith. Good faith is a very difficult idea to prove in law. What if they come and get me? I can't listen to the silliness. No one is coming to get you. These so-called facts about Hess, they contradict all the available evidence. I know. Aren't you completely bowled over? Albert Speer himself told me that he was outside Hitler's study door at the precise moment the Führer learned of Hess's flight to Scotland. He gave an inarticulate, almost animal cry. Animal cry. That's what he said. Mrs. Sorga, plan three is rubbish. I'm very much afraid this trip is going to prove a complete waste of time. Baker, Jan, Hensman, Gruner and Yar. How do you do? Welcome. Hello. Peter Kosh, Stern Magazine. Nice to meet you. Oh, don't worry. There's a great deal of material to get through. And since I don't read German with great ease or pleasure, you'll have to translate for me. Oh, my Lord, even for us it is difficult. They're written in the old Gothic script. I must use these transcripts. Just one formality before we start, please. Would you sign this secrets pledge? <laughs> Charles and Brian have already signed a secrets pledge. The Times pledged not to reveal the contents of the diaries to the outside world. We must ask you to pledge not to tell the Times oh. what is in the diaries. Until we have a deal with them. March 1933. Visit of the specially chosen men and the plans for the new Standarte unit of the SS at Lichterfeld. These SS Standarte must carry my name. I look every man in the eye. They know I am one of them. I was a soldier at the front. I've lain in the mud. I know the grind. working man. I have given my whole being, all my warm heart for the well-being of Germany. Almost as proof of this, the sun shone all the time during my tour. They call it Hitler weather. Before I arrived and after I left, it rained so hard the people were drenched. September the 30th. We have signed the Munich Agreement. We will march into Czechoslovakia on October the 1st, as I always said we would. Despite our little tiffs, I like doing business with the English. In the end, they always see reason. By train to Bayreuth to hear Siegfried, Frau Wagner entertained us to an excellent dinner afterwards. How inspiring to me are the works of Richard Wagner. The ring of the Nibelung reminds us over and over again 
of the seriousness of the racial problem. I will not rest until I rid my nation of every last evil. It is important to keep one's temper in these important times. Although Mussolini shakes his medals at me and is frequently condescending, we need him. So I tell him, Benito, you are one of those lonely men of the ages on whom history is not tested, but who themselves are the makers of history. He liked that. April the 3rd. Slept badly. My left leg was numb, and an owl screeched all night long. How I hate these wretched birds. How I love to spend time at Berghoff. The air of our Bavarian Alps is so sweet that even the dogs are happier. It never fails to rejuvenate me. The children who visit are enchanted by the views and by Angela's wondrous pastries. Today she served her famous Mohrenkopf and Winbeutel. But in the end, I must return to the affairs of state. Reality intrudes. The idyll comes to an end. I give myself wholly to the people once again. The Blitzkrieg goes brilliantly. It is a mechanized juggernaut such as the earth has never seen before. Our triumph is proof of the loyalty of our people and the justice of our cause. December the 12th. This is a cold winter. In spite of our preparations and the excellence of our armor, the bitter weather freezes the steel of our engines and the hearts of our brave men. They die like dogs on the Eastern Front. They and we are exhausted. We know that the Fatherland will protect us all. July the 21st. The cowardly bomb plot has failed and the traitors will be found and punished. My doctors expect me to make a rapid recovery. What's taking the bugger so long? There are 58 volumes, Rupert. He doesn't have to analyze every bloody line, does he, to get the vibe? Jesus Christ, we're not in the history business, we're in the entertainment business. This launch of our secret rocket weapon onto the British mainland guarantees the ultimate defeat of our enemies. And that is the last entry. And all these were salvaged from the same plane crash as the diary. Uh, Gundelfinger's plane, yes. And three handwriting experts have authenticated the diaries. Yes, their statements are beneath the photograph. Uh, and the age of the paper has been chemically tested as well. <coughs> so bizarre. And who's the supplier? Uh, he Heidemann has sworn to protect the man's identity, but Peter knows who it is. Yes, yes, it was... Uh... A Wehrmacht officer, um, completely to be trusted. Oh, I'd be happy if you told me his name. Then Goebbels' diaries came by an anonymous supplier, and no one doubts that they're genuine. Then you are satisfied, Mr. Trevor Roper. Gentlemen, I came here today in a very jaundiced frame of mind, as Mr. Sorger will testify. But yes, when I see the sheer bulk of the diary, I mean, who would forge nearly 60 volumes when six would serve his purpose? They must be the work of Adolf Hitler. This is an extremely exciting moment for me, for all of us, for the world. Yes! Not that there ever was any doubt, but to have the confirmation of one of the world's greatest historians is... That's most gratifying. This is a very exciting moment for me. Well, for us all. For the world. Yes, that's agreed then, Mr. Murdoch. We shall see you and your lawyer in Zurich tomorrow. <laughs> Bye. Remember, no book rights in America, eh? Banta must have first option. Don't worry, I don't intend to let Mr. Murdoch make the running on anything. Uh, Steffi. Yes, sir. 
Yes, get me New York, will you? Newsweek magazine. I want to speak to William Broyles. Right away, sir. Well, a very interesting poker game here. And we hold all the aces. So let's raise the stakes to the limit. Yeah? Yes. He said the diaries were of huge importance. The diaries! The diaries. Connie. To Connie. 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 Uh, and to Mr. Hugh Trevor Roper. Uh, <laughs> huge Trevor Roper. Uh, Roper. <laughs> For ending all doubt about the diaries, there will be no more tests. Oh, there will, actually. Drink up. What do you mean? What do you mean, what I mean? There's a uh, test, a little fiddly, fiddly forensic test. That's all. Small beer. Connie, to us, in sickness and in health. Yes, the Trevor Rivers story has been a real shot in the arm down here. You must be pleased. What? I can't hear you. I, I lied today, Henry. I lied to Trevor Roper. At first, I, I abstained from the truth, and, and then I bent it, and all in the name of the scoop. I know we're making history, but what kind of history is it that we're making? Um, terrific stuff. reaction to Kristallnacht. Sorry? The night Jewish shops and synagogues were smashed. I'm with you. Report brought to me of some ugly attacks by people in uniform in various places. Also, of Jews beaten to death and Jewish suicides. What will they say abroad? The necessary orders will be given immediately. I hope your security is tight. The Israeli Secret Service would kill to keep that from being published. My God. David Evig may have been correct after all. These will sell a few papers, eh? <laughs> <laughs> so we'll uh, we'll talk over lunch at the hotel. Hmm? Peter, Wilfred, you better lock up here. They are extremely disappointed about the book rights, but here is our revised offer. I like that word, revised. 2.5 for the American rights, $750,000 for serialization in Britain and the Commonwealth. Three and a quarter million dollars. Well, that's a real lightning mathematical mind you've got there, Jan. Well, it's a good offer. We'll, um, we'll give you our final answer at five o'clock on Monday. Coffee? Brandy? The cure? Mr. 
Mr. Broyles and Mr. Parker of Newsweek? Yes, we are. Wilfred Sorger of Gruner and Yarr, Stern's parent company. Pleased to meet you. Uh, this is Gerhard Weinberg, <laughs> professor of modern history. Ah. Uh, University of North Carolina. Now, this is particularly interesting. It's, it's the entry relating to the conference in Munich in 1938. There's this quite startling tribute from Hitler to Neville Chamberlain. I would have imposed quite uh, different conditions on Mussolini, but couldn't do so with that clever fox, Chamberlain. This accords absolutely with my theory about Munich. We're running out of time. Well, what's your opinion? I can find no fault with the diaries. <laughs> well, of course, Maynard and I must get clearance in New York, but our thought was something in the region of $500,000. Well, now, you mustn't look at me. Uh, Jan is our negotiator. I'm afraid if you want to compete with News International, you'll have to move into another region. $3 million would be the realistic figure. Jan is a very tough man. By the way, the truffle cake is wonderful. We'll call you from New York Monday. I think you're handling this brilliantly. Thank you. So, Murdoch is competing with Newsweek, only he doesn't know it. Masterful, eh, Gerd? Masterful, Gerd. Our negotiations should be like a cup final. Serious, hard fought. But if they're not fun, they're nothing, right, Gerd? <laughs> right, Gerd. Oh, by the way, uh, push through those forensic tests, will you? Peter Koshy is obsessed with getting results. I'll put Baldi onto it immediately. I see Frank Giles is back from holiday. <coughs> they say Hensman still isn't in. I don't like this. Something's up. Yes. Hello, Mr. Broyles. Yes, um... Understood. Newsweek is offering three million dollars. That is certainly very competitive. We'll be back to you in 48 hours. That is unbelievable. You give me the shits. We had a deal in Zurich. We never said deal. We said we'd phone you by 5 o'clock on Monday. It's Monday. It's 5 o'clock and I'm phoning. That is the situation. The UK rights are still 750,000. But the entire package, including America, would now have to be 3.75. That is $500,000 more than I offered you last week. You have a lightning mathematical mind, Mr. Murdoch. Listen, you crowd bastard. Don't think you can buggerize me around. I'll get C of E to telecopy a new draft contract. How about that? I take it Murdoch's dropped out. Not at all. He was just letting off steam. He and Searby are going to draw up a draft contract and telecopy it to us. He's not such a difficult nut to crack when you have something he really needs. Bastard. Doesn't change the offer by even one dollar. Right. We're selling the US rights to Newsweek. The UK is wide open again. I'll show that Antipodean megalomaniac he's dealing with a world-class power. You can't say no to Rupert Murdoch! I just did. Where's Shoulder Hillen? Abroad for a few days. Wouldn't make any difference if he were here. It would! He's a gentleman and you're an asshole. <laughs> To 
Dr. Josef Henke, Federal Archive, Koblenz. Dear Dr. Henke, I enclose three blank diary pages and material from Gerd Heidemann's archive. It is urgent. We have a forensic report on the age of the paper. <laughs>